Hello everyone, good morning. Hope all of you are doing well. Let me... I am moving my screen, sorry about that. It, um, it's a great day here. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. I returned on Thursday from my retreat in Michigan that um, it's, it's really fun to go to the Midwest uh, in the fall for me. Having grown up in the Midwest, I, I, you know, there are times when I miss the seasons, but here in Northern California, where I've just recently moved, we do have seasons and the trees are starting to change here, but they were just getting beautiful as we were driving down. I think it was Highway 94. We were it was just, a, a, it, it just was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So all of those of you who are back in the Midwest and the East Coast enjoy all that beauty uh, that's, that's come in. The smell in the air was, was good too. So I'm glad I'm back. It was a fun time, uh, lots and lots of laughter. Some of it, I say, was at my expense, but you know. We all have different opinions on that. So good morning, good morning, good morning. Today we're going to be working on two blocks. We're going to work on shoe fly and churn dash. With the shoe fly, I'm going to start to finish, just walk through some things. For those who are a little bit newer to quilting, or piecing rather, then I will, you know, talk as I work about pinning and cutting and accurate quarter inch seams, all of that. And I'm going to do this one by machine. And then I will do the churn dash block and we're going to work on the hand um, joining, you know, four squares and, and, you know, two blocks together and how to make those intersections work for you. So, I think it's time to get started here. So let me drop the camera down. So here's the shoe fly block, block and you only make one of these. And again, I have put the sizes on here because I, you know, they do not tell you what size they're to finish at and that um, type of uh, you know, that type of information. So again, I want to talk to you a little bit about when we make our half square triangles, they're showing it to, to work on it from a hand piecing method. And so you would make your templates and cut them out from a template. And this one if you, if I don't know how well you can see that on screen, but to, to know what size to cut it, if you are doing the, by machine, simply measure the bottom half because what you do in a half square triangle is you cut a square in half to get that, you know, you'll get two triangles out of it. And so as I measure from this corner to this corner, it is three and seven eighths. It is going to finish at a three inch block. So whenever you have a block that you're going to do half square triangles, remember that the magic number is seven eighths. So if this is finishing at a three inch block, normally um, unfinished, it's going that half square triangle be three and a half. And so the magic number is to add to the finished size. So this one is three and seven eighths. And then the shoe fly block, as you can see, has the squares uh, going. So they need to also finish at three inches. Therefore, for a square, you're going to, to cut it at three and a half. So those are the sizes for those of you who are, you know, cutting with a rotary cutter and want to find those and not using the templates. So we're going to make half square triangles. I am not cutting my triangles in half. I'm going to do it, uh, you know, the simplified way. When I have a lot of these half square triangles and there, there may be some blocks in there, I don't recall where I need at least eight, then I'll use my papers, the uh, Simply Star papers. 
and when then we'll start putting the rows together and then put sewing those rows together and we'll end up with our one shoe fly box block so let me move that aside and here i have my i have my center block i have my four three and a half inch squares for around that and then i have two pieces of the light color my background for the three and seven eighths to make my half square triangle and I have two of my print fabric for that. So I went ahead and traced, I thought I had made it dark enough, maybe that one's a little darker. I went ahead for um, camera purposes to draw my line directly from point to point. I wanna, you know, just draw your attention to, to one thing on here, and that is that when you put your ruler down to draw that line, make sure that you leave, um, you know, an edge for your pencil line if you're going to do it this way. Uh, don't put the, the ruler directly in the corner. You want your, your pencil mark to be there so that it is an even you know, quarter inch on e either side and you won't um, come up short on your block. I will tell you that three and seven eighths is what you would cut if you were doing the triangles together. Uh, just to give me some a little bit of wiggle room on camera and I periodically do this anyway, I, I cut it at four just so that I, you know, I have a little bit of wiggle room and I'm going to trim it up to get rid of the bunny ears and stuff when I'm done. So to start with, I'm going to put right sides together, uh, line these up, and I want to drop a pin on either side closer um, to the bottom of this simply because I know that um, oftentimes when I'm when I'm stitching down these lines this wants to move a little bit as as I work with it so I, I want to put those um, and I double checked that I was doing right sides together because when I I sewed a little bit um, yesterday to get everything prepared I didn't do that and I had to unsew and redo all of those. And here's something about putting pins in. Um, when you push like this, see how it slides up here? I don't want that sliding to happen and that I get um, those points off. So I put my needle straight down push it in and then slide it and I don't get that movement up there. All right, let's. And if you have the Sew Steady mat, then that would be, um, you know, you can use these lines here for your quarter inch. Um, and normally that's what I do. I love that so I don't have to do any marking. Uh, but today for camera purposes, we're going to do it this way. All right. And I just want to stop and show you here that your, my point is right on that quarter inch line, which makes it wonderful. Um, I don't have to, I don't have to do the lines. I can simply keep my sewing there. Um, I think that pin is going to get in my way, so I'm going to move it. And I definitely use my and I chain stitch, so I know that in my um, shoe fly block, uh, I am, you know, going to work my way down. Um, and so just to keep everything moving, 
in the middle row of my shoe fly block, I have um, print fabric and I have my center. So I'm going to go ahead and sew those and they're going to become my, you know, I, I use leaders and enders. That's going to become my leader. And uh, this is, you know, here going to be my ender for those two blocks so that I can keep sewing without cutting thread. Um, for me, thread's expensive. And it's just a time saver on my part with that. So then I can um, trim that off. And I, I, I know that I'm trimming that off camera, but I think you, you get the gist of it. All right. So now I can sew down the other two sides at a quarter of an inch. And the other thing that um, I find very helpful is that sometimes when you get to the end of a, of, of a point or something, uh, you know, your hand wants to let go. So I always hold the side of my machine as that moves through because I, you know, I find that I can hold it and it will stay straight and I keep my quarter inch seam at the end. So that's something else that you may or may not want to think about. All right. I remove those pins. All right. Now I want to set my seams even before I cut them just to make sure that everything is on the um, up and up. And I'm going to live slightly dangerously and not use my ruler and just follow my line and cut those pieces in half. All right, now I, I'm going to put these. And when I press, I, I set my seams, I simply hold this back, I hit the side of my seam with my iron. I know for those of you who've been with me on other projects, I, I've said that many, many times. Um, and then I press and we don't iron because we don't want those, you know, those bends in our, in our block. So as I trim this, I want it to be three and a half. So I'm going to put my 45 degree line down the center and I've got just a tiny, tiny bit that's left um, on the sides because I had that extra eight, eighth of an inch. And so I'm going to trim it. I think I need a change my blade and then I will do the same on this side and this now the bottom and the at the top or this side and this side needs to be laying directly on that three and a half and that's the other thing I don't except here on camera I do not um, sit and cut because I get off the mark and I know some um, some people have to to sit and, and to do their cutting and stuff for um, many reasons but if you're standing up you can see a little bit more clearly on terms of that so now I have my three and a half inch block and it's going to match up with my other my other blocks so I want I'm gonna do another one here just so that I can get a couple of rows and get you started on that and then you can move on from that
and we'll go to the hand stitching. So again, the 45 degree angle and line that up, making sure that you have that directly, that 45 degree angle on your seam line. You know, it was so it was kind of fun this week, this past week. Um, one of the ladies was struggling with getting her, um, you know, her material cut and and blocks and stuff, and she was really having to press hard, and it was it was difficult for her, and it it was really kind of fun to share with her this particular cutter. At first, she didn't like it because it was heavy, and then as she worked on it, she realized she didn't have to press as hard, and it was cutting really cleanly for her. So she was very excited about that, and it's really kind of fun to be able to, um, to you know, to share a product that helps people. So um, on the shoe fly block, the white is down um, towards the center a floral block goes in and then the other one is on the side um, like like that and then this would go in here with the other with the other with the other side of that so now you simply sew these together in rows and I will say that if you can sew on the side opposite of the seam, because when you put this under your machine, sometimes it wants to push or bite into that because of this, the diagonal seam line there. So I would flip it over. Just, you know, you got to keep it straight. And sew from this end to this end, holding again, when it goes through the needle, holding it again so that your hand is on the side and it goes all the way through without it turning. And depending on your machine, I know once in a while when I get down there and if I'm not holding it, um, my machine will, will take it and go off the edge. So we, we don't want that um, for that. So that um, is really the shoe fly block. I want to see if there's any comments here that I need to address before we move into the hand stitching. Um, just good morning everyone. It's always so good to have you here. Uh, all right, I'm not the sto the yeah, the so steady mat. Kristen put it up there if you're interested in that. And Laverne, you're right. You, you doing that, and this the whole sewing. You know, you do get accurate when when you start to work on certain, you know, work certain ways, and holding your hand there definitely, definitely helps. So I'm I'm going to put this one aside for the moment, and you can see in that in the shoe fly block that. Let me move my iron so I don't. So again, you have your half square triangles and we're moving here. If you do it as I, you know, did it on camera, if you were to, if you are doing all of your blocks hand stitching, you're, you're going to have the two triangles. You would sew them together, um, starting at the quarter inch in, um, as we've been showing you the last couple of weeks. And then you'll sew, um, these, you know, I do chain stitching, so I will flip the B over to the A and sew it and then keep moving it through B over B and the B over that A block. And then I'll, I'll snip the first one, sew it on, you know, sew the third one, and I'll get my three rows. Sew those rows together and you have your shoe fly block. Now we're going to move to the churn dash. And let's do a little bit of the same thing here. On this rectangle, if you were cutting it by rotary cutter, it is three and a half by two. This 
um, half square triangle is three and seven eighths. It's going to finish at three. We add our magic seven eighths to get our diagonal cut. So three and seven eighths, and this block is three and a half. So if you've got your book handy, you can just write those right in. And the, the process is exactly the same as it was on the shoe fly. Uh, it's just that the, the colors are moved separately. In her quilt, she did, I'm kind of moving this so I can not dump the iron over. The, the actual churn dash is light on the opposite corners and the background is dark. The opposite two corners, the churn dash is dark with the background light. You can do this truly any way that you want to. I'm going to follow this pattern with the, the fabrics that I chose and how it's going to, you know, come out that way. So I will have the two opposite corners being, you know, a light churn dash and two being a dark churn dash. And, you know, you can pick four different colors for blocks. You can make these the same or these the same, you know, Choose what you like and what you would like to put in put in there for um, those. So let's grab. Let me grab my churn dash. I've already started sewing these, uh, but I want to um, share with you. Again, you do not press the seams on the churned out when you're doing hand stitching after each one because we work under the seam and I would like to um, do that again so I have already sewn this one so there's not that much you know camera time and now I'm going to sew the other one on I've pinned it in the corners I have my quarter inch uh, lines sewn on there and so again we start a little bit away from the and remember that your pencil line takes up space so when you put your needle through make sure that that needle is coming right at the top of that pencil line so we're going to put it in I have my knot already secured I'm going to back stitch I don't want that knot in the corner so I'm back stitching and then I will um, move right along and I caught some fraying there all right so I'm going to take another stitch back stitch and then I will um, take a few running stitches and, and you really do want a nice sharp needle I, I use sharps for this and so I'm just cruising along there um, with my you know my stitches and then when I come through my fabric and I want to start again I take a back stitch and then I start moving ahead once more and when I'm holding it more for my liking and make sure you keep you know your your fabric where you um, need it at the top and bottom so that your quarter inch seam stays a quarter inch seam I can go a little bit faster but I'm trying to look at the screen and make sure that you can see what I'm doing and if you can't um, please note that in the chat in the chat box um, and I just was talking and goofed up on that so let me go back here And when you get to the point of here, let me excuse me for just a second. I, I want to take this. Okay, my apologies. 
All right, so I have stopped, and now this on the back side, I am going to, I held it to my left, I went down, so let me come back up right in that seam line. All right, so I sewed to that seam, you know, to that seam line, and now I'm going to go under, and I want to come back under it. So as I move it now um, to my right, and I look really clumsy here because I'm struggling just a tad, because I want to go under that and come up on the other side. And I don't want to sew through that because I want that open like that, all right? So now I'm on the underside. I'm going to bring that back up and I'm going to do that right right next to the seam line so that that is secure. And I will say that I have found even with my sharp needles that this um, background fabric um, is a little um, is a little tougher than most to sew through. I don't know why. Um, it should be. And you know the the checked material is that woven, so it's like butter um, to hand sew through. All right. Back stitch again. And now when I get to my quarter inch ending, I want to go right in that seam line at the quarter inch because I want that held together and I want that um, to be secure. All right. And for good measure, I'm coming back up right at that. And I want to take a couple of back stitches. to get my knot that I'm going to make out of the way of my seam line. I'm going to knot that off. And now I have, you know, that top row completed. All right, so now I have my, you know, my second row that's going to go in place, and now it's connecting these two seam lines together, and we're going to do it pretty much the same way we did before. So I'm, I'm lining up my seams exactly in that seam line. I'm going to drop a pin just so that they stay in place. And again, you don't want them pressed at this point. All right. So this is standing up. You know, and if the spraying, you know, just drives you crazy, um, you can take a uh, fray check or something and, and, you know, put on it. Now, I just for the sake of, of time, I'm going to start here in the middle and work my way simply through this intersection. And off camera, I'll go back and um, sew it, sew it in. So I need to knot my thread and get all the phrase off and then I'll check for questions um, that you may or may not have and again when you're back here at your quarter inch seam uh, you're going to want to back stitch um, you know you're coming up if this was the end you're coming up into it you go back and take a back stitch or two or three 
and then you work your way into that intersection. So I'm going to come up just so that you can see where I'm coming. So I have all of this. I want to pull this back to the right or to my left, excuse me. Today I don't know my my right from my left. And I'm, you know, I'm just going to come up and down and then I want to go in right at where they come together. All right. And I'm coming at an angle so that basically, let me try to show you, I want to come out on the other side, all right? So I'm coming in a slight angle at that quarter inch, all right? So I'm, and I missed it. My fingers are all. So I have my markings on there. I know you can't pretty much see it on the dark, but I have it right there. So I'm coming up on that side. So I went through and came up on this side. Now I am going to bring my needle up on this side. All right, on my quarter inch seam. My seam is open, that's closed. Then I'm going to start stitching again right where that intersection is. I'm going to take a stitch or two. I want to go uh, take some stitches backward. So I'm back stitching a couple of stitches and I lost my thread. So we'll um, so you're going to back stitch and then you'll continue on. And when you come to that intersection, uh, as you see it, it will be right where it's supposed to be, all right? I'd pull on it a little bit more, but I lost my thread, all right? And those those do line up when you, when you bring them back, and so your intersection is correct. Are there any questions, um, if you have any, on... Um, Oh, the knot. Um, sure. I will go through um, measuring those blocks again. And let me cut um, some thread here. And I'll show you that what I do to get that knot. Um, I'll measure the, um, the blocks again. This is what I've always known as the quilter's knot. And so I hold, and gosh, I should have darker thread. I lay my thread over my um, pointer finger on my left hand. Um, and then I, then I put it over the pointer on my right, lay the needle on top of the thread, and then I wrap it two or three times then I grasp it above that wrap with my thumb and pointer finger, and then I just simply pull straight down, and I have a knot at the very end of my, my thread, okay? So that is um, knotting that. Hopefully that, um, that works for you. And then let's go back to this and how I know what these are um, for, you know, the templates, it's not so important to know that because you're going to draw your template uh, with your quarter inch, you know, your quarter inch seam allowance and put that in um, so that you can um, put it onto your fabric and you'll draw that around the template onto your fabric. But for those who are wanting to um, cut these out uh, with the rotary cutter, and I even do that for my hand stitching, I just use the rotary cutter. I've got it on here and it shows that this is two by three and a half inches. All right. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's 
three and a half inches that way. It is two inches this way. And again, I'm sitting down, so I know it's not quite where it's supposed to be. So that's, I measure that. And then for the half square triangle, because a half square triangle is half of a square, I simply measure the bottom part of this. And if this piece is three and a half inch, inch you know, in length, I know because of the block that the rest of the blocks need to be unfinished at three and a half. And that means that they'll finish at three inches. So the magic number for a half square triangles, you to the finished size of a block, you add seven eighths of an inch. So I have measured from this point to here, and it is, um, if you can see it, it's at the three and seven eighths inch mark. On the on the ruler so I know that I'm going to cut three and seven eighths inch squares and if I'm doing it by hand I'll cut those squares in half if I am doing it by machine uh, you know I'll leave I'll sew a quarter inch on either side of that marked line or using my sew steady mat and then simply again um, measuring that square and I will you know as we get further along these are you know beginner blocks they're they're simpler but as we get into some of the more difficult blocks with curves and all of that our you know what we're going to do is is going to change a little bit so hopefully that was helpful to you let me just check again and make sure um Pressing and not ironing, yes, I will go over that with you. Measurements, uh, the knot, and the finishing knot. I just, I just, you know, knot it like you normally would to finish off because um, the other one is a little bit more difficult to do. Let me go back and get, so pressing as opposed to ironing. For me, ironing is movement of your iron. And we're working a lot of times with bias, etc. And we don't want the, the fabric to become distorted. It's also another reason why I do not put water in my iron. If I, for whatever reason, need, you know, water, then I will spritz it on with that those new spritz bottles, which evenly spreads it over, and I definitely only press. I set it down, and so I'm going to try to be over-exaggerating when I do that. So I set my seam, and I, you know, I try not to move the iron. I hold it back on that seam line. And I want my seam to be, you know, very flat. So I simply touch the side and your iron actually stops. And when I am doing that, I'm actually lifting the iron slightly off my fabric. So I'm not pushing the fabric at all. Okay. I'm just, you know, I, I kind of lift. It. So this is what I would be doing, but I don't lift it that high. All right. Then I simply set the iron down on it for a couple of seconds and um, once that's done I don't have that wrinkle that often comes over that I have not compromised the sides of my block they're still square if you notice a little slight bow in your blocks and when you trim if they're not straight trimmed if they have a you know a little bit more in the center then you're probably ironing as opposed to pressing and you know it's a very rare day when I move that iron. I simply set it down. When I do the things, I definitely lift it up each time um, just slightly so that I'm not compromising the sides of my blocks. Hopefully that helped um, with understanding that. And so those are the two blocks. You're going to make four of the churn dash one of the shoe fly for next time so you know these are our easy weeks and then you know we're starting well we have two blocks next week again and then we'll start working towards 
a little bit, you know, tougher things. And not necessarily that they're extremely hard. They're, they're going to be curves. There's, there's going to be, uh, you know, um, matching in and partial seams and things like that to get our blocks. But again, I will share with you some other methods to get to where we need to go with those types of blocks. And I'm looking forward to that because it's kind of exciting for me. And a couple of blocks I want to even show you that uh, you could applique um, pieces on within this and it won't change the look of the quilt. Um, it's just another way of tackling the problem. So I hope you're going to have a wonderful week. Good luck with this. Again, I would like to share with you before you get going. Terry uh, sent me pictures of her uh, first run of blocks. So uh, please take a look at these. Oh, that's the wrong one. Boy, Terry's very good. She finished her quilt. Here it is. And so it's lovely. And she is not using the kit. She's choosing her own fabrics. And so far, so good. This is going to be wonderful. So Terry, thank you. And for the rest of you, um, as you make your blocks and get them, uh, please feel free to put them up in the forum. And I will share them here because it's it's nice to see what others do and how they're, they're working with that. And if you have any questions, if you're watching on YouTube, please put, um, you know, your questions and your comments um, in on YouTube as well. Um, if you are a member of the Quilt Show, which I hope you are, then um, please put those in the forum and I will get back to you in various ways throughout the week. So have a great one. And good luck with your with your sewing and have fun with it. And I'll see you. I'll see you in seven days.